be helpful. Alright, today, like I said guys, we're going to talk about circles, we're going to talk about writing equations of circles, all sorts of great stuff like that. So, what is true about any point on this circle with the radius of 10? What is true about any point? What? It's always 10 away from the center. Any point on the circle with a radius of 10 is always, always 10 away from the center. Okay? Doesn't matter where that point is on our circle, because it has a radius of 10, it is always at the center. So, this hint, think Pythagorean theorem, is going to help us write an equation for a circle with center at 0, 0 with a radius of 10. <coughs> Why would Pythagorean theorem help us? What is Pythagorean theorem? A squared plus B squared equals C squared, right? Uh, yes. Well, we're at the center here, right? That's 0, 0. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. What's my A value for that? Look, there's a little triangle drawn in there, right? Yeah. Hey, I want to use that triangle to write an equation for my circle. What would my A squared be? Without looking at those values, though. Because it could be any point. I'm just using this one specific point. Why did you say 6? Right? That's just an x value, right? So x, y, right? Because this could be any point. We don't know what our scales are. Well, we know we know what it is, but it could be anything. That could be any point. X, y, right? X comma y. So if I write that out, I'm looking for the equation of circle a squared plus b squared equals c squared. My x value squared plus my y value squared should equal 10 squared. All right, and then to write the equation, all I would do is x squared plus y squared equals 100. Congrats. You just learned how to write an equation of a circle centered at 0, 0. Right? Because any x, y on this circle, if I square them, no matter which point I pick on that circle, it could be anywhere. Right? As long as it's on that circle, if I square its two coordinates, x and y, add them together, it should equal 100, no matter where I am on that circle. So, when we're writing the equation of a circle, the same thing, right? x, y, x squared plus y squared equals a radius squared. That is our equation for a circle. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Right? That is the equation for any point on a circle. Any point on the circle fits that equation. All right? Now, Monday, we're going to talk about what happens if it's not centered at 0, 0. But today, we're just going to talk about any circle centered at 0, 0. OK? So no, that's what happens when they're on the circle. What do you think, what do you think it's going to look like if it's in the circle? We're going to keep x squared plus y squared. But in relation to r squared, in relation to the radius squared, if it's inside the circle, it's going to be what? Someone said it. Who said it? Speak up. Who said it? Is that you, Colton? Oh my gosh, you're saying somebody said it. Less than. Less than the radius squared. Guys, right? Think about it. If it equals the radius squared when it's out here, to be inside, it would be less than the radius squared. Right? What do you think about outside the circle? X squared plus Y squared is going to be greater than the radius squared. It is very important to remember those three, right? We're going to ask you questions about it. We're going to ask, is the point 4, 6 inside, on, or outside the circle? You need to tell us using that 
figure out does it equal r squared, is it less than r squared, is it greater than r squared, where it's going to be in reference to our circle. So if we look, well, we're just going to ask you right now. Circle centered at 0, 0, radius of 8. What is the equation? Well, x squared plus y squared equals my radius squared, right? 8 squared, which, what's 8 squared, Paige? 64. 64. So the equation is actually x squared plus y squared equals 64. We're not going to leave it as 8 squared. Right? If we have a radius that we're plugging in to make an equation, we're going to do that number squared. All right? So this is my equation. Centered at 0, 0 with a radius of 8. x squared plus y squared equals 64. What we want to know is negative 3, 5 inside, outside, or on that circle. Now, how do you think we're going to do that? How do you think we're going to figure that out? Jalen. Perfect. Plug our x and y value in. See if it's less than, greater than, or equal to 64. So negative 3 squared plus 5 squared. I don't want to put an equal sign there. So I'm just going to solve that out. Right? 9 plus 25. It gets me 34. I know 34 is less than 64. Right? I don't want to put equal signs here because I know it might not be equal. So I'm just solving it out. I right? plugged in negative 3 for x, plugged in 5 for y. Dom, because it's less than 64, is it going to be inside, outside, or on the circle? Inside. Good. Inside the circle. Pretty easy, right? Yep. <clears throat> Any questions? Did y'all find where that was on our note back in? Okay. Write the equation of circle. Set it at zero, zero, radius of six. Patty, go. Yeah. What is it? X squared plus y squared equals six. What does it equal? 36. 36, right? We want our radius squared equals 36. All right, Anna, write the equation of a circle. Set it at 0, 0 with a radius of 2.5. X squared plus Y squared equals 6.25. Equals 6.25, right? Equals 2.5 squared, which comes out to 6.25. All we're doing is taking our radius and squaring it. Hey, guys, if for some reason someone were to try and trick you and say, uh, what's the equation of a circle centered at 0, 0, with a diameter of 18, what would you do to find the equation? Divide it by 2, so you have your radius, right? The diameter is twice the radius. Now, just be aware of that in case it ever comes up. I don't know. All right, well, let's work it backwards now. They give us the equation. They give us the equation. I want to know the center and the radius. Well, we said the only center we're working with is zero zero, zero, zero for right now. <laughs> zero zero. All right, a radius one forty four. I heard that shit up on the camera. <laughs> equals r squared. If it doesn't, you're going to be wondering why we're all. Um, so 144 equals r squared. So to find my radius q, 12. 12. How'd you do that? Uh, 144 square, square root. Square root it, right? My radius. <laughs> radius equals 12. All right. We good? Shh, quiet. All right. Hey, next one. X squared plus Y squared equals 20. William, what's my center going to be? Uh, zero, zero. Zero, zero, right? Ooh, 20. So 20 square equals R squared. If I square root that, you don't get a good number. You don't get a good number. So what? Two root five. Two root five, right? Just Simplified radical. Square root of four, square root of five. Two root five equals r. So my radius, 
is 2 times square root of 5. <coughs> right? Simplified radical form. Now, there will be questions on like homework or even in the notes sometimes where you have to convert it to a decimal because you're going to want to try and graph it. That's fine. But when it asks you the radius, still write it as a simplified radical. All right? We'll come upon that later today, don't worry. All right. How is this one different? Write the equation of circle centered 0, 0 and goes through the point negative 6, 8. How is this one different? We're not trying to solve this. I just want to know how is this one different. No, it's not. It. That's why we're not doing it. We're just talking about it. Right? How is this one different from what we just did? You're solving for the radius. We don't know the radius. We don't know the radius. So we would have to state. We would have to solve for the radius. Which, how would you do that? Negative 6 squared plus 8 squared equals radius. Square root of the radius. Technically, it, it is Pythagorean theorem, but we could use which formula that we used yesterday? Which formula? Distance. The distance formula. So we could have used the distance formula to go from our center to our point, and that would give us our radius. Now, we're not going to do that. Don't worry about doing it. All right, but we will do that at some point in this unit. So just be aware of it. All right, writing equations in circles. Oh, we just said we were going to do it. Can, given the point 512 on the circle center at 0, 0, can we find the radius? Yeah, we just said we could, right? Using distance formula or Pythagorean theorem, because it's basically the same thing, right? Now, I'm going to use Pythagorean Theorem because it saves us a couple steps and it looks a little nicer when we write the whole thing out. I know I have 5 and 12. So, to find the radius, 5 squared plus 12 squared equals r squared, right? x squared plus y squared equals r squared. We can use our formula of a circle, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Well. 25 plus 144 equals r squared. So I get 169 equals r squared. Do I want r squared? No, I want r, so I'm going to take the square root. My radius equals 13. Right? So just plug them in in x squared and y squared. It equals r squared. We said that. So then I go to write the equation of that circle. Right, center at 0, 0 is going to be x squared plus y squared equals what, Calvi? 169. 169. So it's our radius squared, right? 169. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So you could use distance formula. You could use Pythagorean theorem, which is technically the same as our equation of a circle. Okay? Any questions so far? We good? What are other points on that circle that we just talked about? It's got a point 5, 12 on it, and we said it has a radius equal to 13. There are 11 points we should be able to come up with that are on this circle. Well, besides the one that we already know. Besides 5, 12. Negative 5, 12. Negative 5, 12. That's one. Negative 5, negative 12. That's another. 5, negative 12. Okay? That's 3. 0, 13, right? Our radius is 13. So, 0, 13. What about... Anything else? 13, 0. 13, 0. I heard negative 13, 0. 0, negative 13. Four more. 12, 5. 12, 5. Negative 12, 5. 12, negative 12, negative 5. 
Negative 12, negative 5. Right? There are 11 points that we should know just by being given one point and a radius. Right? And we're going to use our radius just like we did up here when we start graphing circles. Right? The radius should tell you four points on its own, going up, down, left, and right from your center. Right? And if you're given another point, 5, 12, 5 squared plus 12 squared equals our radius squared, right? So any combination of 25 plus 144, whether it's negative 5 squared and 12 squared, whatever that may be, should give us another 7 points. All right? So if, like, on, an, I don't know, homework or an assessment or something, we ask you to write out some points, you should be able to list out a bunch of points for us. We give you a point in the radius. Okay? Does everyone understand how we got these? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah? Okay. Any other questions? All right, I think we have a little more to go. Can we answer this now? Write the equation of circle. Center at 0, 0 goes to the point negative 6, 8. Can we answer that now? Yep. You just said we could, right? x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Plug these in for x and y. Right? Negative 6 squared plus 8 squared equals our radius squared. Thirty-six plus sixty-four equals r squared. One hundred equals r squared. Guys, do I have to find what the radius is? No. No, I can just stop where I find the radius squared, right? Because then I can plug this in right there to get my equation, right? Now, if it asks you for the radius, then obviously you have to keep going. But once you found your radius squared, that's the part we're looking for to write our equation, right? x squared plus y squared equals 100. That's my equation, centered at 0, 0 through point negative 6, 8. Right? Do we understand that? Some of us are looking like, I have no clue what's going on. Some of us are taking a nap. Any questions? All right. Then, wow, look at, look at this great problem. And we just talked, we said, we are going to do this to you, right? We want to know, are the points in, out, or on the circle if it has a radius of 14? Well, first of all, let's figure out what's my equation for this circle. The circle of this sprinkler. X squared plus Y squared equals what, Jalen? What? R squared. Well, my radius is 14, so what's 14 squared? 196. 196. All right, so that's the equation for my sprinkler. All right, my sprinkler, X squared plus Y squared equals 196. Well, how do I know if these trees will be watered? Well, greater than, less than, or equal to. But which ones are going to get watered? The ones that are less than it, that are inside, right? So if they're inside or on the circle, right? The circle will get hit too. Or on the circle, they get water. If they're outside the circle, they're obviously not getting hit by the sprinkler. So what I want you guys to do, I want you to find, are these three points in, on, or outside the circle, and tell me if they'll get water or not. All right, that's what I want you to do right now. Inside, outside, or on the circle.
All right. How many people think three trees got water? How many think two got water? How many think one got water? How many think none got water? Good. It is one, right? You look, you see the middle one is the only one inside, so it's the only one that gets water. All right? Any questions on that? Pretty easy, right? All right. Then, how do I graph? I kind of mentioned it earlier. What do you think? Well, let's find the center and the radius first. How about that? Zero, zero. You said it's the only center we're working with today. Zero, zero. What's my radius going to be? Seven. Right, Anna? We're taking the square root of 49. Our radius squared equals 49, so we square root it. We get seven. So how would I graph this? I'm going to graph four points. If I start at my center, and I know I have a radius of seven, that means I can go to the right seven, plot a point. I can go up seven, plot a point. Left seven, plot a point. Down seven, plot a point. I have four points plotted there, and I can draw my circle in. Now, your circles are going to be really ugly. Please don't make them boxes. Try and make them a circle. Mine would be really nice because I have this cool tool. I make perfect circles, it's fine. You said don't make them a box. Don't make them a box. Right? If they look like a box, I'm going to mark them wrong. But if you try and draw a circle and it looks a little lopsided or looks a little off, that's fine. Right? Okay, well, don't make it a square and you'll be okay. It's a rounded square. Do the best you can. Alright? Hey, next one. Next one. Page P. What's my center going to be at? Zero, zero. Thanks, Paige. My radius. Now remember, 30 equals the radius squared. If I take the square root, I don't get a nice radius there. Right? But I can do simplified radical form. Is there a perfect square that goes into 30? What? No, there's not. So my radius is going to equal square root of 30. So if I answer that saying square root of 30, can I go right square root of 30 up, square root of 30? Do we know that? No. Put it in your calculator and estimate it. Right? 5.4, rounding up 5.5. 5. So, guys, still answer it with that simplified radical. Still answer it as square root of 30. When you go to graph it, punch it in. So 5.5-ish, up, down, left, right, and then draw in your circle. That's all we have today. That's it. Finito.